So you're starting to think about your geography research dissertation. I'm here to provide you some advice on how to get started and how to design that. I'm Damien Mansell, an Associate Professor of GIS. So I'll be focusing on thinking about topics that relate to spatial analysis, GIS, remote sensing, but also in a particular area um, of uh, research that interests me uh, in glaciology, but not exclusively um, glaciology. So think of your dissertation as a really exciting opportunity to engage, explore, dive into a particular sub-discipline um, area of geography. So I'm going to help you identify that and to uh, come up with uh, an original research idea, which is important for um, developing a dissertation um, topic. So to come up with an original idea, let's break it down into four things for you to think about. Data. So you've already reading some interesting papers on a particular topic, and you go, yeah, this has really grabbed me. I'd like to explore that for my dissertation. Well, one way to add originality to an existing project is to go, well, we've got some new data that we can start to explore, and we can tackle this um, this, um, this research area, this problem, this question, from with a slightly different lens, with a slightly different angle, that could offer new and exciting insights. Likewise, if there's a, a new cutting edge technique, you can revisit this area of developing understanding and you can go, oh, I can apply this new technique of remote sensing, classification, um, or whatever it might be. Uh, processes, thinking about the processes of the physical geography that you're interested in. Whether that be the, the scale of the processes, so this these findings that you've been reading about, do they relate to a particular catchment a catchment scale or a regional variability, or are they looking at a continental scale um, process? Uh, you could break that down into thinking about whether or not these apply large scale, small scale, medium scale, regional variability, or at different time scales, seasonal variability, annual variability. So you can explore these processes maybe over a longer period, maybe um, at a different um, scale. And that kind of comes back to data. When, it, when you're looking at like remote sensing data, you've got an opportunity to go back through the archive, but also you've got an opportunity to extend um, existing papers by um, taking, them, taking them further into the, into the current time period, maybe with new um, and exciting data. And then finally, thinking about your study area, you've got a, you've got a, you've got a, an interest, um, and you want to know whether or not this problem or this theory or this these findings relate to different areas. You can think about the environmental variables. Are you looking at ice cliffs, or are you looking at ice shelves? Does that matter? And you can do a comparative kind of study. So there's a couple of ways to get you thinking about um, originality, but these four. Uh, things for you to think about will help you as well in your in your research design, especially like techniques. If there's a particular technique that you really want to develop during your dissertation, then um, it's good to identify that uh, earlier on. Maybe it's some coding, maybe it's some remote sensing analysis, or maybe it's some field work. You really want to go and do some field work, then that will straight away sort of help you narrow down um, where you can um, logistically and affordably go and take measurements within the confines of your um, geography uh, dissertation. But it is important as well at that point as well to think about employability. Maybe there's a, a skill set that you really want to develop for a particular career path. Um, then you've got the, all this opportunity in your research to develop those skills. So do think about um, techniques. Here in geography at the University of Exeter, we uh, will teach you spatial analysis through the GIS um, teaching that goes on. Also there's a remote sensing um, module and if you're interested in glaciers and cryosphere like me then take those take those modules because it will aid you in developing your uh, ideas but also developing your understanding of holes in the research and identifying that originality um, in the area. So do think about your, your module um, options um, and training uh, in, in when you're designing your uh, dissertation. Okay, well, let's sort of explore some of the data that might be available to you to help you um, get some ideas. And I'm going to start by not looking at a glaciology um, application, 
But uh, going to um, the Living Atlas, which is a uh, Esri um, archive of all sorts of different um, spatial data, and there's this fantastic um, data set that's just come out that is uh, available to you. The Met Office have made their um, climate model data super accessible through ArcGIS um, online. So have a look at this. You've got monthly precipitation projections for the, for the UK. You've got temperature projections, uh, annual temperature projections monthly. So again, thinking about that seasonal scale. Precipitation projections. What can you do with all this amazing projections? Well, straight away you can start to start to think about originality. You can go, well, what what do we need to do in order to um, prepare for um, heat waves or um, flooding? Um, and we can combine that with all sorts of other um, spatial data. So at the University of Exeter, you also um, no, not Digimap, but Digimap. You have access to Digimap and all the ordinate survey data. So you can look through those um, those collections. You can download that data. Maybe, for example, take the, the rail network. Then you can do a spatial drawing between the rail network and the uh, and temperature projections and ask questions such as where in the UK our railway lines most vulnerable to um, overheating and expanding. And you can start to play with thresholds and you can start to explore this in detail. So if you're interested in any sort of spatial analysis, spatial data, then um, do come and talk to me. If you're uh, excited about um, remote sensing and uh, want to explore some of the satellite archive then go over to earth explorer do a search on a particular area and have a look at the um, the data sets that are available to you landsat is a great place to start for looking back through the archives it's the longest running satellite archive there is um, and so you can start to explore some of the sort of climate change questions that you have you're looking at like a 30 year minimum sort of period for that um, but also you've got exciting new data sets that are becoming available to you, Sentinel data sets. Um, so do explore um, the archive there. The other place to look if you're interested in the cryosphere is the National Snow and Ice Data Center. Uh, let's go to the home page and from there we can go to the data and we can just explore the data. Let's have a look to see what data sets are available to you. These can be um, snow observations, could be um, uh, different projects like the Glimpse project or the Measures projects could be ISAT2, so satellite data, but there could be data products as well, like velocity data that are available to you, so you can start to explore some of these um, important um, questions. Okay, just a quick uh, overview of, for a couple of um, suggested places where you can have a look at some uh, data sets. I just run through a couple of um, previous student um, examples um, just to provide you a bit of motivation because I can get it can be a bit overwhelming at this stage. So student Richard looking at um, Arctic precipitation on glacier flow uh, and surging. And for each of these examples, I've just taken a, a figure to sort of showcase some of the things that these students were doing. So in this case, looking at the seasonal variability and the flow speed of these uh, of this glacier. Uh, Harry has been looking at um, velocity on marine terminating glaciers, in this case looking at ice front um, changes. Again, that's an update of the study from 2016, updating it with um, uh, most recent observations, most recent findings, new satellite data. Um, melt season on Ves Vespona using uh, radar imagery. Radar's great because um, what happens, it's got an interesting interaction with um, meltwater, so you can see that this temperature variability here, this is on the, the right hand um, y-axis, and look, concentrate on the zero line here, zero degrees. Now when the radar uh, gets to um, zero degrees, it drops right down, that's because the surface of the snow has started to melt, and so the radar is really attenuated. 
great. So this is an example of how you can use the radar to identify um, onset of melt. And so you can ask questions like, how early is melt um, onset? Is it, is it getting longer? Are there more days of melt per year? Um, are there areas that we're not experiencing uh, melt for certain time periods that are now? You start to explore those sorts of um, questions. Rebecca here is looking at ice mass uh, and their influence on El Nino in um, South America. So looking at Landsat data from 1984. And I include this figure here because her approach was, was stunning. Looking at um, National Snow no, looking at a normalized different snow index, using that to apply a threshold to identify the snow line, and using the long-term um, snow line to identify the ELA and, and look at how the ELA has changed uh, through time. Um, surge dynamics uh, by uh, Tom Francis, Th Th Thomas France. And uh, this is an example here of um, yeah, velocity data identifying a surge, exploring the, um, the dynamic behavior. But I include this figure because Tom is using optical data. There's a big hole here during the um, polar winter where optical data is not available. And that's okay. You can still tell a lot from what the data, uh, from the data you have available to you. It's very unlikely you'll find like the most perfect data set with every single time sequence that you would like. Uh, so Tom did a great uh, study with the data he had available. Um, lakes in um, Nepal, looking at hazards, risks, glacial lake outburst flooding, um, surface melt patterns across the whole of Svalbard using um, MODIS data, I think of Sam here. And Joe did a great study on um, desertification, so not related to snow and ice at all, but looking at similar techniques, classification, looking at changes in land use, uh, land patterns, um, as, uh, as detected from um, remote sensing. So just to finish up, pick a topic that is of interest to you. Think about the originality. What skills do you want to develop? The scale of the project, time scale, spatial scale, what data are you going to use, and that area of interest. Look forward to talking to you more about your geography research dissertation. Thank you.